strength. One, two, there you go. We, we have power. Yeah. Pentecostal power. Amen. So it's really great to welcome you all this evening to our Pentecost gathering. We're going to celebrate. You know, we're on day 49. Tomorrow evening is when Passover actually begins. So we are one day ahead of ourselves. But um, we wanted to really posture ourselves, put ourselves in a position as we celebrate the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And so we wanted to put a gathering on this evening where the thirsty could come. Any thirsty people here? Well, there's a few. Any hungry people? That's better. So we're going to have an incredible time of worship tonight. I believe that God's got a word just for you. And that means he has a word for everyone here this evening. Because I believe it is a night of refreshing, a night of restoration, and it's a night of empowerment. And I believe that God is going to pour out his spirit. And uh, let me just read to you as we come to together in worship. It says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come. They were all together in one place. Suddenly, there was the sound like the blowing of a violent wind that came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Listen, I believe that as you've come tonight, God has interrupted your weekend. Amen. Just by coming here, you have made an interruption. And in that interruption, God is going to do something unusual. See, God interrupted this day 2,000 years ago. He's still the God who interrupts today. He's still the God who does unusual things today. You may be here. This may be the first meeting you've ever been in. It may be the first Pentecost meeting that you've ever celebrated. So it's already unusual. So you've got nothing to fear. It's already unusual for you. And also it's suddenly, listen, God can break in at any time. I believe there's going to be a prophetic flow this evening. Many of you are going to get prophetic words. We've had a school here all day. We call it GPS. That is Global Prophetic School, God positioning us in order to release prophetic revelation and strategies. And so I just sense tonight too that God is going to remove some things and He's going to replace things tonight. So why don't we come and stand? I'll tell you some other things later on that's going on here at Revival Fires. But this is the first meeting that we've had, which has felt like we're back together as church. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a big praise. Yeah, hallelujah. Go on, keep praising Him tonight. Oh, yes, Lord. We honor and we magnify your name, Lord Jesus that you have the name that is above every name, that at your name, Jesus, every knee will bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Go on, give him praise as the worship team take us into worship.
tonight. Go on, wave your arms. Say, I'm here, Lord. Speak out in your unknown tongue tonight. Do rebesiere manane vele, koro mo shiro vasando romande le masse de lo de, koro kosiro vasara vasando ro.
So come like a fire Spirit burn inside of me Move in your power You are everything Come now So come like
Think of all you've done. Remember all you've done. You never left, no. You keep on coming, you keep on moving, don't die. Saturday was silent, surely it was through. Since when is it possible that I ever stopped you? Sunday's disappointment, Sunday's empty too. Since when has it possible ever stopped you? Hey. Oh, there's a song, here it comes. Because this is the sound of a drop bones rattling. This is the praise, make a dim man walk again. Oh, the second verse out this evening Pentecostal fire here we go Pentecostal fire is stirring something new you're not gonna run out of miracles anytime soon come on resurrection power runs in my veins too
this expectation in a room in such a long time. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? It's tangible. Just lift your hands into his presence. Oh, there's things that are going to change today. There's things that are going to shift today. Because we declare it. So let's sing, live, live. Live to those things that need life. Live to those things that you thought had died. Let's prophesy healing. Prophesy turn around. Sing open the heavens, invite him, invite him. Open the heavens. Yeah, open the heavens. Come fall afresh. Open the heavens. Oh, yeah. Open the heavens. Open the heavens.
and just wait on him. Engage with heaven as you wait upon him. We wait for you. 
place tonight. Right beside of the spirit moving in his place. I want to prophesy a harvest of healing, a harvest of salvation. Cause miracles happen.
is the breath of the Spirit. If this is a move, if this is a move, this is a move. Sing about the bodies tonight. The bodies are still being raised. The giants are still being slain. God, we believe that. Yes, we can see that. The wonders are still on mountains are still being moved. move something tonight go on shatter the atmospheres tonight go on make a breakthrough tonight go on make a declaration tonight that things are going to move things are going to shift whatever it is that's in front of you say I am coming through this I am coming through. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Go on, just tell it to move tonight. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, when we came in the meeting tonight, there was such expectation in this room. But we have moved from expectation to actuality. We have stepped into something tonight. And listen, 
it isn't going to go back to how it is. We have stepped into a new place tonight. We have stepped into that which has shifted and we have stepped in to a new place with God. Give Him praise tonight. Give Him praise tonight. Hallelujah. You know, I believe there's people here tonight and over the next month, you are going to shift out of the place where you are because it's taking you nowhere into the place where it's going somewhere and God says it is time to move it it is time to shift it is time to step in and you cannot stay in that place any longer so say move it oh thank you Lord Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Let me tell you, it's now our day. It's our day. It's the day of God's power. Thank you, Lord. You know, just bless somebody by you, can you? Just tell them that they look so good in the anointing. Go on. Tell them. Tell them they look so good in the anointing. You know, if you're here with your husband or your wife, you're here with your boyfriend, girl, just tell them you look good tonight in this anointing. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You know, I mean that the anointing changes things. When Jesus anointed, they didn't even know it was him. He had changed that much. Hallelujah. You know, we're in a changing atmosphere tonight. Can everybody else feel it? I mean, the, the atmosphere is tingling. Ha. Wow. You know, it's such a blessing to welcome you all. This is our first real gathering like this in the last 12 months. Come on, give him praise tonight. This is breakthrough night tonight. We are not going back. We are only going forward. Amen. Anybody joining us? Anybody moving with us? We're going forward. Hallelujah. And what a time to gather at Pentecost celebration. Pentecost is where we celebrate the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, tomorrow is still being poured out. The last 2,000 years he's been poured out. But we're just celebrating the fact that there was a day in history where God poured out the Holy Spirit. And we're here tonight to celebrate that fact. And not only to celebrate it, to get into a new place of anointing. Amen. We were, we've got a school here. It's called the GPS. That is Global Prophetic School. It runs online and there's also times when we've been able to gather today was the first time for that school to gather here in person. And all the rest of the time we've been gathering on a Zoom and we were able to gather here and it's called God's Prophetic School or Global Prophetic School. And, uh, and it's just been an incredible time. We are here for the first time. You could sense something was happening in the atmospheres today. You know, things change. Atmospheres, praise changes atmospheres. And, and it causes, you know, that praise is Judah. Some of you may not get all of this. It's okay. Let what goes over your head get, go over your head. What goes into your heart, let it go into your heart. That's the only thing that matters. 
But Judah, the Bible says, Judah is a name for praise. And God says Judah will go first. And so as we've come to this first gathering, the praise has just opened up a way. Hallelujah. And what's it opened up a way for the king to come in? Who is the king? Jesus Christ. Who, touch, who touches and changes and transforms people's lives. You know, there's stories here tonight of transformed lives. People who were going nowhere but now go somewhere. People who were at a dead end who are now living life. Hallelujah. People who had nothing to sing about, now they have something to sing about. Listen, that is what Jesus Christ does in people's lives. Amen. And if he's done it in you, give him a big shout of amen. Oh, hallelujah. And so we're celebrating Passover, uh, Pentecost, 50 days. Well, we're in day 49 tonight. And uh, tomorrow is day 50. What does 50 represent in the Bible? Freedom. It means that everything that was stacked against us is removed out of the way. And so we're on the threshold of a place of freedom. In the Bible, it's called the Day of Jubilee. And it sets up a whole year of Jubilee. Well, we're into a 50-day. So Pentecost is about a day of freedom. It's a day of jubilee, that is jubilation, where we shout because every debt has been lifted off us, every sickness has been lifted off us. Listen, we have to start believing this. We have to start believing what God says. We have to start believing what He has said in His Word can happen, and as they came, as they came out from Passover and they came to Pentecost, it was there that God poured out His Holy Spirit upon them and gave them freedom. So this is a first gathering tonight. And we're going to make this first gathering our first fruit offering Hallelujah. Is there a shout of amen for our first fruit offering tonight? Listen, we get excited here about our gifts and our giving. We don't just look at putting it into a collection pot. We bring it before the Lord. Because as we present our offerings before the Lord, something happens. God says in His Word in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9, it says, Honor the Lord with your wealth. Any wealthy people here tonight? I said any wealthy people here tonight. Let me tell you, there has been a wealth of worship tonight. Let me tell you, you are a wealthy people. Listen, we don't count wealth just in what we carry in our pocket, in our bank account. Wealth is something far greater than that. Riches is what you carry in your pocket and in your bank account. But wealth is something totally different. Only God gives you the ability to get wealth. Hallelujah. So are there wealthy people here tonight? That's better. We need to start seeing ourselves differently as we are. And God says, honor the Lord with your wealth. And as we do that, then he says, are you ready for it? Then he says these words. Bring your first fruit offerings, so shall your barns be full. So shall your barns be full. Some of you are looking at me like a cow going through a new gate. Because <laughs> it may be the first time that you've heard this. 
And it says, honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits from all of your crops. What is your crops? Everything that you put your hand to that brings increase. That's your crops. We just need to make this as plain as we can so that we receive what God wants to give to us. And so it says here, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. Who wants the new wine tonight? The Bible calls new wine the Holy Spirit. Who wants more of the Holy Spirit tonight? Well, it's first fruit time. We are coming into a new place. This is our first gathering out of this place of lockdown. We've been able to gather here tonight. We've got people from all around the area. We've got people here from Wales who have come up tonight just to be part of this first gathering. Hallelujah. There is something special about first fruits. And so I want you tonight... As you bring your first fruit, let me just open to it because I believe there is something prophetic about our first fruit tonight. And that is as we bring it, God is going to bring treasures to us out of the sand. What is that? Things that have been covered is going to be uncovered. You do not realize what it is tonight that you're setting in place. Listen, as you bring your gift tonight, Listen, and don't just, don't just look at your gift tonight as what, what is the least that I can give? You know, sometimes we have this whole mentality. What is, what can I get away with? I don't want you to get away with anything tonight. But let me tell you this. When your gift leaves your hand, it doesn't leave your life. That's what first fruit is all about. It means that as you give it, so what God does, He puts it into your future. Amen. Do you remember Moses? God said to him, What have you got in your hand? Exodus 4, chapter verse 2. He says, What have you got in your hand? I say to you, What have you got in your hand? God says, Cast it down, put it down, just release it. As He released it, it changed in its form. But as God told him to pick it up again, it was transformed into something new. What was a stick became a rod of authority. See, it left his hand, but it didn't leave his life. What about the woman? I'm just giving you illustrations because some of you need to hear this. What about the woman who had the cruise of oil? And when Elisha got to her house, she was in debt. They were ready to take the whole of her children into captivity to pay off the debt, make them slaves. And Elisha asked her, what do you have in your house? Let me ask you, what do you have tonight that you can release? She says these words, I have nothing at all. That's what you may be saying tonight except this little jar of oil. But that jar of oil was everything that she had. And as she released it, the oil never ran out because God filled her house with abundance. And they had to bring all of the vessels from her locality just so they could keep the oil flowing. You're going to set something in motion tonight for the oil to keep flowing. We have to believe what the Bible says about our gifts tonight. David had a stone. What did the stone do? He released it from his sling. He released it from his hand. A giant came down and David was exalted to the place of being king over the whole of Israel. Listen, we have to get hold of something. Why? Because in the natural realm where we totally operate from most of the time, you don't hear this, 
you hear messages about giving, about giving your money to the church, all of those things. But if you go into the spirit realm, you get revelation. And in the revelation, in the spirit realm, it begins to flow through your life. That's what we've been learning on our school all day. It begins to flow through your life. So you're no longer living in the natural or living in the soulish realm. But you live out of the spirit realm. And you begin to get revelation. You begin to get discernment. See, these are things tonight. So what I want you to do tonight is bring your offering. What have you got in your hand? Have you got it ready? I've got my offering ready. Why? Because I want, I want my bonds of God's provision, spiritual provision to be full. I want my jar of oil. I want my life to constantly flow with the oil of the Holy Spirit so that it fills other people's lives and they get full so that they can pour out. Listen, that is what tonight is about. God is going to restore things tonight. So why don't we stand tonight? If you're making out, your um, envelopes here. You can give online. Um, you can give. The best way to give tonight is in by the envelopes. Just you've got credit cards. Just fill it in. If you're watching online, you can give too. Do you want to just mention that, Ryan, how they give online? Yeah, just on the website, just click the give button. It's on the top right. Revival Fires on the website. And That's all great. The you need. And so you can give here tonight. But we want to come and what I want you to do, because it's first fruit, we wave our offerings. They called it a wave offering in the um, Old Testament. And they waved their offering. They weren't scared. You know, in churches, we have this silly process where we make our, we fold our money up or fold our checks up like this, make it like this, make it like this again. We put it in our hands so nobody can see it. Most of the time is because we've got nothing there. <clears throat> but in a wave offering, they were an agricultural community. So when they brought their sheaths, when they, they couldn't hide it, you can't stick your sheaths up your jacket or in your hand. When they brought their grapes, they had a wave them. People could see the goodness of God. Not what they were giving, the goodness of God. And I want you to come tonight. And as you come, as we worship, let's wave our offering tonight and bring it to the Lord. Let's bless the Lord tonight so that His bonds will be filled and that He would release His blessing on our bonds. Amen. Go on, Ryan. Let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior, see what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great
God, you just lift your hand to the offering tonight. We're going to bless this offering. Father, we thank you that out of the abundance of your blessing to us, that we have something to offer to you. Lord, would you receive our first fruits tonight? Lord, we ask that you would now do what you promised to do and cause our barns to be filled in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. <clears throat> you know, we're just getting going here now. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I just want to mention um, one or two resources that we have at the back. One of them is called Time to Advance. And what a time to read this book. And what it does, it goes through the months of the year from a biblical perspective. And so what it does, it tells you of a tribe of the 12 tribes of Israel talks about each tribe and how each tribe has a certain characteristic about it. And then also it tells you about the, the implications of that with regard to our now time. So that's a great resource to be able to go through the God's timing in your life. God knew the set times and the exact places where you should live. So therefore it's important for us for you and for me, to know the time that we're in. So that's that book there called Time to Advance. The other is Discerning the Spirit Realm, a great book by Rebecca Greenwood. We're hoping to have Rebecca here at our next gathering. And that will be by Zoom that she will come in, but we will be live. And so we're asking her to come because people just can't travel as freely, but we can transport them in <laughs> by Zoom. And so there's Discerning the Spirit Realm by Rebecca. And then also there's a, um, a CD that I put together. It's just music and prayers um, on the glory realm. And you just put it on and you just get hold of that realm of glory. And one of, the, one of my favorites on here is fullness of time. And it just releases a sense of God's timing into your life. And I just really sense that tonight we're in a new time. Things have changed. I'm not talking about um, decrees from prime ministers and all of those things. Just the worship here tonight indicates that something has shifted. You know, that's where we are tonight. And, and I feel that there's people here tonight, and you need to hear this message that God has just downloaded with regard to restoring you. See, there's people here in... God is wanting to restore things to you. I don't know what your background is. I don't know what you've come through over the last 14 months. It could be the last 14 years. It could be the last 40 years. But there's things that we all go through. And as we come to this time of um, Pentecost, I've just been looking again. Do you remember when Jesus... Just so you just track with me for a moment, because I want you to get a, a good perspective of what God is going to do in your life tonight. Do you remember when um, John the Baptist, he says, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world? And so here he was talking about Jesus. I believe that that was a Passover mo moment in the life of Jesus. Why would he even say it? Because at that time in Jerusalem, they would have the Passover lambs, little lambs that they were going to sacrifice. And so what happened when John said, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, from that, Jesus was baptized and he came up out of the waters. And then he went 40 days 
I believe it was 40 days of counting the time from Passover to Pentecost. And so after 40 days, it was that the devil began to cause him to be tempted. And so there was a period of time. We don't know exactly how many days that would have been. And then from there, he makes his way up to the synagogue at the farthest point of the um, Galilean lake. And there, it says he went into the synagogue. And when he found the place where it was written, what was written? These words, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. Could it be that that was the time when Jesus was also celebrating Pentecost? The time frame is there. And so he says, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. It was no longer some legalistic ritual, but it was now an anointing upon a person. Listen to what Luke says in Luke 4. He says, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. The recovery uh, you sent me to proclaim freedom for the captives, recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, and to proclaim the year of God's favor. Let me tell you, we are entering into a season of the favor of the Lord. I don't know what this last year has been like for you, but let me tell you, you stepped over a threshold and over the threshold that you are entering into a season of the favor of the Lord. What happens when the favor of God is upon you? He puts you in the right place. So there's change coming for people here tonight. Some of you are going to change the place where you are right now. And it says he puts you in the right place. Why? So that the right people can see you. What does that mean? It means that they're able to see not just you in the physical, but they see what God has put in you. And as they see what God has put in you, what happens when you're in the right place and the right people see you? The provision of God flows to you. Some of you have been in a place of spiritual barrenness that is changing. I decree it tonight over you that it is changing. Something has shifted tonight. And now you're in the right place at the right time so the right people see you and the provision and the favor of God flows to you. Who wants to be in the favor of God? Let me tell you, things are going to change. Hallelujah. There's people here and ministries are about to change. Why? Because in the past season, you weren't in the right place. But you're being positioned. Why? So that the right people can see you. What has been hidden? That's what this month of Lebanon, this month of Sivan, that's, that's the biblical term for this month. So we're just talking about it from a spiritual perspective. And it says that he brings the treasures out from the sand. Some of you thought that you've just been going through a desert place. God is about to bring treasures out of the places that you've been in. Listen, you just need to receive that. There's people here, you just need to receive it. But there's treasure about to come your way. You just watch what God does. And so here, as we enter it, this is what 
favor will do. This is what the Spirit of the Lord will do for you. Now I want to talk to you for a moment. I'm not going to take long, but I want you to value the anointing tonight as it comes upon you. There will be a time of impartation in the worship. God told me how we were going to do it in order to keep it safe, but also it's not safe. Let me tell you, the moment you walk through this door, there was nothing safe about your life. Everything was on offer to God. Hallelujah. And I've got a, a, um, a banner here. We're going to drape it at the front and we're going to, as we finish tonight, we will process through it and then out. Keep it very safe, but it's unsafe. I don't know what is going to happen, but something is about to happen in this place. We've sung about it, but it's no good just singing if God doesn't do it. Miracles happen in this room. Come on. We need to begin to realize that. Things are going to shift. I don't know how you've got into the place that you're in. I know, and I'm not just talking about COVID. I, wish, I, I hope that word gets banned from the vocabulary of the church. Let me tell you, I've said to the church here, when we're able to, and I mean, I, I'm in, I'm in a COVID-free zone. That's why I don't have to wear my mask. And, uh, and so I'm staying here, you know. But, but let me just say to you, I've said to the people in our church, when they tell us we can take off our mask, do you know what we're going to do? We're going to put a great big bin in the car park. We're going to put fire in it. And we're going to watch the demons of this virus rise in the fire of the Holy Spirit. And then we will ban that word from this place. If anybody mentions our place, we're going to stick a mask back on them. I'm joking. I'm joking. Wouldn't be fun though, wouldn't it? Huh? But you see, tonight is a night of restoration. And I want to take you from the, the story of Samson. Everybody knows about Samson. He had real problems with, his, with the women in his life. He had problems with his hair. So ladies, it's not just you. You know, men have serious problems with their hair too. If you don't believe me, just look at the pictures over the last few months of men with hair. And some of you, as I'm looking out, some of you, I can see that the Holy Spirit's already dropped on you. You know, you're shining on the top. You know, I'm joking. And, um, but, but I just feel tonight there's a real sense of joy in this place. You know, if you've not, been to church like this, we enjoy church. You know, we just find that this is a place where we just long to come. It's where we can be ourselves. It's where we can be family. It's where we can laugh together. It's where we can rejoice together. It's where we can worship together. It's where we can be ministered together. All of those things. And so I want you to come into this tonight and let it be your experience. But I want to talk to you about valuing the anointing, what God does tonight. I want you to really value. If any of you are around, staying around overnight, I know there's people from Wales. I think you'll be going back down to Wales. But if you're up here and you've booked in overnight, because there's people from all around. Um, tomorrow morning, I'm going to speak about Elisha valuing the anointing. Um, but here, I want to talk about Samson tonight. Because Samson is a story of restoration. And in the story, you find the story in the book of Judges. And uh, from chapter 13, I think it is chapter 13 through to 16. I am not going to preach through all those chapters. Some of you are thinking a big sigh of relief, you know. I'm just going to talk to you about what happened in his life. And as I talk about what happened, see if those same things have happened to you, because it may be your night of restoration. It may be your night where God causes 
the anointing to come upon your life afresh. You know, so often as we go through times in our lives where God says, I'm going to restore to you the years that the canker worm, the locusts, and the, what's the other one? And the, the, the canker worm, the locust, and the palmer worm. That's the AV um, version of it. And so, and God is going to restore the years that have been taken from us. They come, the one destroys the root, the other destroys the bark, and the other destroys the foliage. And so here, so it makes a complete desolation or barrenness to that plant. I don't know what your life is like. Maybe you're here tonight because there is just areas of barrenness in your life. God is about to restore things to you. Hallelujah. I don't know what you've been doing in the last few years, but let me tell you, tonight is a night where God's changing the time for you. And in this story of Samson, there comes a point in his life. Let me just tell you some of the things that happened. Samson was disobedient to his parents. See, disobedience if it can take you into awful places. It can take you to places that you never dreamed that you would ever go to, really. And it was that he wanted to do something and his parents didn't want him to. You see, the Bible says, honor your mother and father, so shall your days be long on the earth. Why do you think the devil has so attacked mothers and fathers to create a fatherless and motherless generation to rise up? Why? So that children would become disobedient and they would lose the blessing of the land that they have been placed in. We just need to get hold of things tonight. And so here, I know in my own life, I'm not going to go through my story because I want to focus it in on Samson. But all of us, let me tell you, in all of us, there's a bit of Samson. And we ask ourselves, why isn't life going well with me? One of the questions we need to ask is about dishonoring. Dishonoring mothers, fathers, dishonoring authority figures in our lives. That will always cause life to go hard for us because we have to then become independent so we cut ourselves off from provision. And so what happens, people, when they cut themselves off provision, what do they do? They become workaholics. That's one thing. They become drug addicts. They become alcoholics. They become gamblers. They just give themselves to every hedonistic, every pleasure-seeking experience. And they end up realizing that it doesn't satisfy. That is what Samson found out in his own life. You see, when you cut yourself off from God's source of provision, you have to make provision for yourself. And for most of us, if not all of us, we have made some real goofy mistakes in our lives, haven't we? I'm glad I'm not on my own. And so here, he was disobedient. He also played with the anointing. He played with it so that the blessing that he got in his life, it says the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. You know, you, you've seen this. Those of you who like syrup, who likes syrup? That's sweet stuff. You look on a Tate and Lyle tin. See, you didn't know this. Some of you didn't know this, but it has a verse of Scripture. Wow. And on the verse of Scripture, on the tin, the verse of Scripture speaks of Samson. Why? Because he used the anointing as a plaything. When the anointing came upon him, he was able to kill lions, giant slayer. 
And yet what he did was out of his disobedience, he went and he wanted to go with a woman. And so with that is what happened was they gave him, he gave the people of that area a riddle that if they could answer the riddle, he would give them a dowry for this woman. And so he said to them, out of the eater came something sweet. Out of the strong, something to eat. A riddle. And he says, find out that riddle. And if you do, I'll give you, women, just put your fingers in your ears. I'm just saying what the Bible says. I will give you 30 foreskins of the Philistines. Now, that's not an easy thing to do. You can laugh. Okay. Listen, this is what the Bible says. The Bible is a very ordinary, straightforward book. We need to start to see how when we use things and play things is what happens. We use the anointing to pay off debts. We use the things that God has graced our life with. And when he graces our life, we use it in order to pay off debts. Anybody here got themselves into debt by some stupid things, decisions that they have done? Anybody here? Or am I the only one? You think, goodness me, this preacher is really messed up. <laughs> if you knew as much as God knows about me, I would be stumped. Because <laughs> he knows a lot more. Not only that, he still loves me. <laughs> Come on. Listen, there's people here, you need to hear that. You need to break out of what church is like as religious Move into it. The church is a place of life. Reality. Speaks into our hearts in a real way. And so here, he uses the anointing to pay off debt. Have you ever used any of your gifts that God has placed on you? Any of the, the favor that God put upon you? And it's just there to get rid of debt in your life. Listen, it's not a good place to be. This is Samson. Also, he broke covenant. He was a covenant breaker. Listen, we live in a world where covenants are broken all the time. Marriages breaking up. Relationships breaking up. Promises never kept. Businesses going bankrupt because of covenants, promises that were made and never fulfilled. See, and Samson was a covenant breaker. I mean, you're thinking, Trevor, I thought this was going to be, you know, a time of change. It is a time of change tonight. You see, but the beginning of the story, you need to hear it so that you can see that the end of the story is different from the beginning. Listen, you can't change. Let me just say this to you tonight. You can't change a lot of the things in your past. Did you know that? Yet you can receive forgiveness, and some of you will receive forgiveness tonight. I can guarantee some of you here will receive forgiveness tonight. Why? Because God wants to remove the guilt of your past. That's a wonderful thing when God removes the guilt of the past. When God speaks over you, not guilty. And you're able to walk free from accusation. Is that anybody here tonight? You don't need to put your hand up. But if that's you tonight, God has a great transition for you to make. And so here we can't change our past, but we can begin a new story from tonight. You can begin a new story. You can begin something new tonight. And when you look back, it will be from this point, And you say, that is where my story changed. That is where things in my life really changed. It was just in a meeting that I went to Dudley. And so here, covenant breaking. That was him. He started to mess around with his hair. 
See, that was his sign of covenant. God had said to his parents, don't cut his hair because he has made a vow as a Nazarene. And so there was a covenant that had been made over his life. It says also that the, the vow of a Nazarene was also that they wouldn't drink wine. And so here he was. And so what happened? He got himself into a situation and he said to them, well, if you tie my hair to the beams of a doorpost, then I will become like every other person. My strength will go. And so here, did you see what's happening? He starts to get close to the covenant that God had made with him. You see, and with that, he begins to move into a place where he's breaking covenant. There's people here tonight. Again, let me tell you, it's not that you're a bad person. It's just that the enemy, that's one of his devices. He's a covenant breaker. So he comes to deceive you comes to deceive so that you think this is going to have this result and it doesn't, you end up being captivated by the choices that you make. That is bondage. When you're captivated by the choices that you make and instead of it bringing blessing, it brings a curse upon your life. He also used the anointing to get revenge. He used it. He used what he had in order to get revenge on people who had taken his prostitute. That's what happened. See, the Bible is very real. And so often in churches, we don't talk about the Bible in real terms. So then what happens is people come into church who want to hear about real life. And is all they get is a personic religious view of what it is like in church. Well, I'm here to tell you tonight that it's different to that. It is about ordinary people living life, getting messed up, and God coming into the mess, lifting us out, and giving us a new start. That is what it's about tonight. And God has some of you marked down tonight. And so here, he used the anointing. He used the anointing to gratify his own desires. That's when he met Delilah. And so there, the men wanted to get even with Samson. And so they tried to find out the, the source of his strength. And so Delilah, he was laying there, tell, tell me, tell me the, the secret of your strength. And he says, well, if you braid my locks, I'll be like any other man. So they braided his locks. And then she said, the Philistines are upon you. And he broke free. Then he says, well, if you put bind my hands with um, new um, bonds and bound them up, then I will be like other men. They bound his hands with new straps, never been used before. The Philistine, and he broke them off again. And she said, why are you treating me like this? Why don't you tell me the source of your strength? And then he says to her, if you shave my head, I will become like other men. This is what it says. She says, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. And it says, he went out as at other times, but he didn't know that the Lord had departed from him. Anyone here feeling a sense that God's not there for you? It could be that you've got yourself into such a mess that you don't realize it. I'm here tonight to tell you that there is a mess that you're in that God can get you out of. And so here, she says he's upon you and he went out as other times not knowing that God had departed from him. See, there's believers here tonight and I don't know how you got to this meeting, 
but you knew you had to come. I don't know where you saw it advertised, but you knew you had to come. Why? Because tonight is a night of restoration. Things are going to be restored. There are things that you know in your life, that you know that has happened in your life. No one else knows about it. You try and get over it. You try and get under it. But still, you know it's there. Because you haven't brought it out into the light. And you go through all of the ritual of church and all the things in church. So if you don't go to church, this isn't for you. I'm talking to the people who go to church. You go through all those things, but when you go, worship is hollow. There's nothing there for you. You, even, you listen to the message and it doesn't speak to you. But you go out of religious habit. That's an awful place to be. And you don't know the presence. But when you get in an atmosphere like this tonight, you just know there's something there for you. I want you to know that there is something there for you. And the something is a someone. And the someone is called Jesus Christ. And he is the one who comes into our messes, cleans it up, gives us a new start. And so here with Samson, just some things I want you to just remember from tonight. Yeah, we have all got our past. I've used Samson because he had a very checkered history. You know, we all know about Delilah, but did you know all the other stuff that he did? Can you see? We have all got a past. But I want you to know that there is a great future lined up for you. I want you to know that God can restore things like you have never dreamt about. And so they took Samson because he was defeated. And this is what they did. They plucked out his eyes so that he was blind. There is a spiritual blindness that is far greater than a physical blindness. Let me tell you. They plucked out his eyes. They put a yoke upon him. Anybody feel a yoke on their lives? They just feel oppressed, burdened. And so that yoke bruised his shoulders. So he was blind. He was bruised. And also then they bound him and put him in prison. So here he was bli blind, bruised, and bound. But you see, something happened. And every so often, when they wanted to use Samson as a plaything. See, when you play with the anointing, you actually end up becoming the very plaything that you used it for. And so here, they would bring him out from the prison, blind, bruised, with a yoke upon him, and they would get him to walk around in circles, grinding corn for them. And then they would mock him, and they would ridicule him, and just begin to pick on this man who had all this strength, and now here they could pick on all of his weaknesses. What a curse the enemy puts on people. That is all they focus on is the things that you're now doing because of your past. Listen, that is what accusation and ridicule is like. They just focus in on your points that you know more than anyone are your failures. But as he is there, grinding corn for them, something wonderful begins to happen. 
And as he's there on this yoke with this great big grindstone, sweating in the heat of the day, the, the saltiness of his sweat going into the sockets of his eyes, that which should have given him so much pleasure, now giving him so much pain. And so what happens as he's doing is rubbing it off his face as he is trudging round. But something happens as he tries to wipe the sweat away. He rubs his hand over his head. And what happens is there is beginning to be a sensation in his hand. And that sensation is a prickling, tingling sensation because the hair on his head is beginning to grow. There is a sign of a new beginning. I want you to know tonight that tonight there is a sign of a new beginning for you. Things can be different. Give him praise tonight for new beginnings. If anyone is in Christ, they become new creations. Samson was beginning to realize with all the pain in his life that he was becoming a new creation. God was restoring his covenant to him. His time had come. He was in the right place. You say the right place, Trevor. He's in a, he's in a millstone right up round his neck. He's in the right place, yes, and the right people are going to see him. And when the right people see you, you get moved into the right position. Who was the new sign? Who was the person now brought in? It was a small boy. Useless, you say, to help a man who is going to have a great victory in his life. Let me tell you, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is just like that little boy. Some people say, what is the use of this book? Let me tell you, in this book, it talks about one who became man so that we could become like him. This is a story. So when you're in the right place, the right people see you. And the right person was this little boy. And so here, see Samson blind, bruised, and he was bound. Listen, Pentecost is all about giving sight to the blind, healing the bruised and the brokenhearted, and releasing the captives from prisons of darkness. Give him praise tonight. Oh, you need to hear this tonight. You need to hear it. And so here, as he comes to this place, you see, it was his Pentecost. But you see, there's things that he did. And as he says these words, what he says to him was he remembered the presence of God. That tingling sensation. Did you feel it tonight in worship? Something happened. He remembered the presence. And he says, Lord, because he's remembering the present, if you strengthen me this one more time. And so here, as he remembered the presence, he recalled his past victories. He recalled the times when the Spirit of God came upon him and he overcame the lion. He recalled the time when he was able to overcome the Philistines. So he was remembering the times when it says the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. See, there's times when you need to remember. You need to remember the times when God touched your life. You may not be a Christian here tonight, but you just know. You call them coincidences. Those coincidences are God coming upon you. You're here tonight and you've known the presence of God. You've walked in signs, wonders and miracles and it's gone from you. 
You need to recall those tonight. Recall his presence coming upon you. What it felt like again there's times in my own life where I've just come and cried out to God that I might feel his presence again and as he's come upon my life I've recalled what God did and as you do that something begins to happen you see he recalled testimony you got a testimony God's going to give you more than your testimony up to this point. There is a testimony of restoration. I need to turn back there because as I finish tonight, I just want to make these words so clear to you. And here, as he is in this place, he remembered the Lord. Oh, and then he prayed. And what was his prayer? Very simple. You see, we make prayer so complicated at times. Oh, thank you that you are the high and mighty one. God knows all of that. Thank you, Lord, for your redemptive purpose. God says, what on earth are you talking about? (laughs) Can't you just talk to me? Do you have to go through this religious verbiage that's my word for garbage (laughs) so you go through all of these things see and we just need to be real with God see Jesus was very real with his father do you know when he was facing a multitude of people that were hungry do you know what his prayer was I mean it's incredible prayer I don't know about you, but I would be rebuking every demon of poverty. I would be rebuking every demon of hunger. I would be coming against every, every spirit that I could mention in the shortest space of time. I'd be coming against all. Do you know what Jesus does? When he gets five loaves and two fish. Do you know what his prayer was? Lord, I know you are the redemptive God. I know that you can bring good out of this situation because you are the God of salvation and I come to worship you because you're the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity. And do you know what he says? Father, thank you. You think, what type of prayer is that? What? What did you say? I mean, you didn't even put any oomph into it. You know? Listen, it's true, isn't it? You didn't even do a few kumbayas <laughs> and sharabadayanda. You know? Yeah, Father, thank you. And then he says to his disciples, now give it out to everybody. See, this is the type of simplicity in prayer that God is looking for. Do you know why? Because it shows the reality in our hearts. Do you want to know another prayer of Jesus? A great prayer. Raising people from the dead. I mean, I don't know what you're... I mean, most of us would go and pray and fast for five weeks. You know, somebody... T- and then they've really have died. <laughs> you know, the silver cord has been cut. You know? And so what does he do? You know, Jesus, he's at the, he's at the grave... You know, because we've sung that tonight. You know, he is the the stone mover. He is the dead men raiser. And so here he's at the tomb of Lazarus, who's died four days. He's stinking. I mean, most of us wouldn't even want to go near it. Would we? You know, have you ever got around a dead body? I mean, they, they don't smell very nice. And so here... Jesus is there, and what does he do? See, again, our prayers would be all religious. Jesus goes to the tomb, and he says to them, move the stone. When they move the stone, he just says to them, Lazarus, come forth. Yeah, that was his command. But before he came to his command, listen to this prayer. Father, I thank you that you hear me always. 
what? I mean, it's like, can't you get better than that? Father, I thank you that you hear me always. Now, not for me, but for all these standing around. Lazarus, come forth. That was it. And Lazarus came out of the tomb. See, reality in our prayer. See, God's going to allow you the reality of praying tonight. And so what does he say? Then Samson prayed to the Lord. Listen to this prayer. O sovereign Lord, remember me, O God. Please strengthen me just once more. And let me with one blow destroy, get revenge on the Philistines for my two eyes. That's it. And God did what he said. You see, I believe Philistines, they represent to us today, because we're not going to annihilate Philistines. I believe Philistines represent to us today worldly thinking, common sense. That's what they represent. They represent worldly wisdom. How we think we ought to get out of a situation. See, and God wants you to overcome your common sense approach to life. And he wants you to move into a place of spiritual wisdom tonight. And all the wisdom is found in Christ Jesus. He is the wisdom. It says, in the house of the wise, there is plenty of oil. So there's going to be oil put in people's lives tonight. And so here, when he asks God to remember him, to strengthen him, it says, then he asked the little boy, because when you're in the right place at the right time, the right people see you, and the provision of God flows to you. And he says to the little boy, can you put my hands against the two pillars? So the little boy lifted his hands up and put them there. And then he gave one push. And as it says here, bracing himself against them, his right hand on the one, his left hand on the other, Samson said... Let me die with the Philistines. Then he pushed with all his might, everything that he had left. And with that, he saw more victories in his death than he saw in his life. Let me just paint a picture for you with this, and then I'm done. You see, I'm not talking about you going out and using strength in order to die, in order to get victory over a situation that you're in. You see, I'm talking to you about giving your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm talking about you as a Christian. You got into a right mess. And I'm saying to you tonight, it says, he who saves his life loses it. But he who loses his life gains it. I want you to gain your life tonight so that from this moment on, you have more victories than you have defeats in your past. And so tonight, I believe that this is a night of turnaround. It's a night to push back. It's a night to push back where you've been and to step forward and to enter into a new place. So that you see God fulfilling a great purpose in your life. Amen? Amen? I want you to bow your heads for a moment. I want to pray for you. There's people here that God wants to touch your life in a powerful way. I've used what I can to try and illustrate it to you through the life of Samson. But you see, we've all got a bit of Samson in us. We've got a bit of the strengths in our life as well as the weaknesses in our lives.
We've got a little bit of brokenness in our lives, a bruising in our lives, a blindness in our lives, as well as the things that we've been able to accomplish in life. But you see, tonight is a night of restoration. So why don't you just bow your head a moment, because I want to pray for you. And if you're here tonight, and it is a first fruit, this could be the first night of a new life. This could be the first night of your restoration. You may be here tonight and you have never met this one called Jesus. So up until this point, your life has just been one coincidence after another. But now the coincidence, he wants to reveal himself to you as the God of incidents. And if you're here tonight and you've not met the Lord Jesus Christ, I want you to lift your hand just like I'm doing now. Just lift it up. I will see it because I want to pray for you. Is there anyone here tonight that you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior? Thank you, Lord. Anyone else tonight? Sit. Don't hold back from this moment. Whatever's going on in your heart, just let it go and say, Lord, I just lift up my hand to receive you. Thank you, Lord. You may be here tonight and your life is, keep it raised, and your life is a little bit like Samson, that you've known the power of God in your life, but you've also known the failures in your life. And so for you, it's just saying, God, I just need a new start. I have felt something in worship tonight. I want to be restored back to that place where the anointing of God is upon my life. If that's you, can you raise your hand? You're saying you want to be restored tonight. Thank you, Lord. You may be saying, Lord Jesus, would you strengthen me one more time? And so you're wanting God's empowering presence upon your life and you raise your hand can you now what I want you to do for those of you raised your hand why don't you stand I'm coming down here why don't you stand with me that's it just stand up this is your moment now what I want you to do is to ask the person next to you if you buy a person buy someone and say, ask them, should you be standing to become an evangelist tonight? Just speak to the person next to you and say, should you be standing to? And if they should, why don't they stand right now and tell them that you'll come down and take this next step with them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we do bless you tonight, Lord. Now, for all those who've stood, come and join me down here, can you? That's it. Just come down here. Right out the front. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody. Just celebrate people who are coming tonight. This is a new beginning. A new start. A new story. So come on into the front, there's space here. Come down into the front here. Come into here. That's it. Thank you, Lord. Now I'm going to ask everybody else to stand, can you? Join with us as we pray together. Oh, thank you, Lord. This is Pentecost. This is a night of anointing. And Father, I want to pray. And I want you to pray with me this prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, everybody in the congregation pray. We're just joining with them. Lord Jesus Christ, I come to you tonight because I want a new beginning. 
I want a new anointing upon my life. And so I ask you to forgive me. My failures, my mistakes, my sin. I thank you that you have cleansed me. And now I want you to anoint me. So come, Holy Spirit, touch my life and give me a new start. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, Father, I ask that for everyone who's responded tonight, I ask that you would mark them with your favor from this moment. Lord, that you would put them in the right place. And in that right place, that the right people would see them. And when the right people see them, that your provision will flow to them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Go and give the Lord a great big clap tonight. We just bless you tonight. You know, I'm just so thrilled for what God is going to do in people's lives that this is a new story that's going to be written from this moment on. You're entering into a new story. Let me tell you, old things are being wiped away. Slates are being cleaned. God is doing a new thing. Hallelujah. So we're going to go into a time of anointing right now as we finish. There was going to be a time I was going to ask our prophetic team to start prophesying over people. What I want them to do is as you go through, particularly those who have responded tonight, as you go through and under the canopy, I just activate. With that, we're going to hold this banner up as you go under it. The prophetic team is going to be lined up down the side there. And they're going to pick you out and prophesy over you. God's word is going to come to you. New words are going to be declared over you. Words of life. Amen. So what we're going to do as we transition from here is if I could ask all those who have responded to move over to this area here. Don't move back. Move over to this area here. And uh, I want want some of Gary. Can you come? And uh, that's it, just move into this area here. I want you to pick up this banner because we're all going to go under this banner tonight. And uh, let's see, you hold the one side and uh, you can this side, Luke, so just two of you. You can have to hold it like that. When your arms get tired, somebody else will come and take over. But I want us all tonight to walk under a fresh anointing. That's what tonight is all about. God restoring the anointing on your life. And so what I want, we're going to begin to process through. I'm going to ask the prophetic team if you line yourself up down there. And as people come under it, you just, if you've got words for them, you just give them those words tonight. And so why don't you start going underneath it? That's it. Go on, you can begin to start. Somebody has to start. There's always a trailblazer. Alan, God says you're going to set a new trail that others will follow. That's it. So just begin to go through. Just run your hands over that as if it was a mantle of anointing coming over you. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, hallelujah. And then I want everyone else just to begin to process down and go through the anointing. That's it, the worship team, you're going to sing. Why don't we sing Waymaker? Yeah, thank you, Lord. And... uh, 
Can I just ask the prophetic team, just like you were prophesying earlier in the day, it's rapid release time. There's lots of people that you're going to give words to tonight. Thank you, Lord. I worship you. Hallelujah. I worship you. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. You are here. Oh, yeah. Moving in this Thank you, Lord. I worship you. I worship you. Working in our midst, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. Just receive tonight. Thank you, Lord. God is making a way for you tonight. As you leave here tonight, I want you to carry this anointing with you. God has filled your life tonight. Become the pot that pours out into other people's lives. Now, just as you guys just want to mention one thing, and that is we're gathering here on the 25th of June, 7 o'clock, and then all day on the 26th, uh, 25th of June at 7 26th of June all day and it is our unlocking the mysteries of the kingdom gathering it is going to be an incredible time together and so put that in your diaries and gather with us 25th 26th of June 
And if you're around tomorrow, we've got a great morning with baptisms. We've got a number of people who got born again just recently with all that God's got, all of the clothes down, locked down, shut down. We still see God doing miracles, signs and wonders, saving people. So if you're here, come and join us tomorrow morning and just enjoy another day of Pentecost. God bless you all. Stop.